told you it's got a hard cut off. Hi, hello, what's up? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> you were good. I wasn't good. I knew, yeah. I knew, I knew to expect it. I was like, oh, here comes the hand. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no longer purple though. There's no. It's not a. It used to be no. a purple hand, but now it's a normal colored hand. hand. Or yeah. I, get, I mean, purple hands could be normal too. Who knows? Who am I to say? I've never, I've never seen a purple hand before. I would say that's abnormal. You have so many options for other colors, but purple is not a normal hand color. I mean, if you cut off your blood circulation, eventually the hand will go purple, won't it? Right. Yes. Isn't that accurate? Yeah, eventually, your eventually your hand bloats up and turns purple. And okay. Falls off. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to see a purple hand, uh, Max suggests that you cut off your blood circulation and uh, yeah, it will go purple. So. <laughs> If, if you harm yourself or anything, you can't sue me. You got to sue Max because he's the one that said that. It wasn't me. Right, Max? <laughs> he's muted. He's not even going to say that I'm wrong. He, he 100% agrees to me. That I'm <laughs> that's, that's what I heard. Yeah. Uh-oh. We got some static, Max. Oh, boy. You got to fix oh, that oh, static. That's... that's a hard mute. Oh. Woo. <laughs> Woo. That's a hard mute. Okay, he's unmuted on my end. Mm-hmm. It was better. It was better on the. Uh, uh-huh. when we didn't have mm-hmm. that. We'll so. let Max That's deal okay. with his tech problems mm-hmm. that uh, yeah. he's currently having. Uh, Dan, what were you playing right before that? Were you, I didn't have a chance to check out the stream, but I think it was Hearthstone. Is that accurate? Yep. That game's still running. It, it's they still got yep, players. <laughs> expansion came out today. Okay. What uh, what is in? I didn't know that there was an expansion at all. What's the the gimmick this expansion? Um, the new mechanics are twin spells, spells you can cast twice. Okay. Um, and then the other one is there's lackeys, which little dudes you can summon that do a little something special, but pretty much it's, it's just another expansion with new cards. Nothing like super okay. gimmicky. Yeah. How many packs did you buy? That's the real question. That's where you should always begin. I only bought 250 this time. So it's, I'm cutting what? back. Yeah, I'm cutting back. 250 fucking packs? How much? What the fuck? It used fuck? to be more. Do you have the amateur the, shit. Do you have the whole deck the already with that? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I got most of them. I got, Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. What was the best legendary you got, Dan? You Probably don't even know. One. You don't even know what you opened. You, you had to think major- about the cards that you had to... <laughs> <laughs> and there's just, I had to process there's so many. Uh the the mage legendary is really good. It's a ten mana dragon that's four twelve stats, and then the first spell you cast every turn is free, including that turn. Oh, that's pretty so good. You, you can cast big ass spells like when you shouldn't, so you can cheat mana. How really much does good. it cost to play that card? It's ten mana, all your mana. Oh, okay. But so yeah, it's you pretty can late. cast a spell for free, you get this do a spell too. Sure, sure. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. Are there any like uh, crazy, absolute game breaking cards that you've run across already? Besides that one, maybe? I haven't seen anything crazy just yet. There's been a couple like Silence Priest is pretty bad. Um, Murloc Shaman's nasty. Uh, Secret Paladin's kind of back a little. It's overall, but it's still too early. It's only been out for like a couple hours, so people sure. haven't really got the break the game yet so you're saying i can't net deck a like pro a pro deck right now i gotta wait a, a day or two before i can really jump you in can there. net deck some decks but they are not they're untested decks and oh. they're going to be unrefined they're sure. like rough it's, it's sort of like poe skills like people don't master them until a couple couple patches down the line when they learn how to combine it with the right things you know sure it's like that okay all right makes sense uh what else you've been playing the past we did a show last week right it's been a week is that it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, yeah. playing Time is outward. real, real slow for me lately. <laughs> <laughs> You've been playing what? Uh, outward, the uh, Deep Silver RPG. Yeah. How are you liking it? It's pretty fun. It's a, it's a flawed gem. Like, it has a lot of mechanics I really like and a lot of mechanics I don't. Like, for example, uh, it doesn't help, doesn't, like, tell you, it's like, you just send you out in the world. It just says, fuck off, learn how to play or die. And, um. But it's weird because when you die in this game, you don't die. There's no so you don't. There's no saves coming. When you die, you get saved and are tra- teleported somewhere else. So you can never reload a save. So saves coming is erased, which oh. is kind of interesting. An That's alternate cool death system. That. Yeah. Uh, something I don't like about the game is it's very 
the maps are very big and open, but they're very empty. There's not a lot in there. Like there's like a couple mobs in this massive field or this massive area. So it's kind of like, so it's like um, big but like empty. Dag- like like Daggerfall, where it's like it's the world's biggest role playing game, and there's yeah. nothing. Yeah, just yeah, nothing. It's it's huge empty emptiness. <laughs> Just some <laughs> randomly put together dungeons every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. What type? You said you're playing a paladin. Did I mishear that? Is that? Uh, yeah. The in the game, um, you get to pick three skill trees, um, to combine whatever class you want. They have rogue skills, m- warrior skills, and uh, uh, mage skills. You can have um the bottom skills of every tree, but there's like these break points in the middle of the trees where you can only have three of the top tiers to make your own custom class. Gotcha. So if you want to do Spellblade with a mix of Warrior or Rogue with some spells, like you can do anything you want, mix and match. Hmm. Which that part's very fun. Cool. All right. Uh, are you on the uh, Anno 1800 right now? Because I'm, I'm fiending for it. Yeah, I'm just like, please, I will do whatever. I will Just give me the game now, please. Watch yeah. it. Yeah. It was done in beta. Come on. Well, the open beta starts Thursday, so... Yep. Doesn't save over to the, the main to the, the main launch. I think all those worlds are gonna get released, but you're gonna start over yeah. a billion times. So who fucking could just play. I know. You're gonna start over a billion times because you're you're gonna notice that that one plot of land is in the wrong hex. It's the best city builder I've played in a very long time, so I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm excited to just see time be erased uh, <laughs> as I journey through. It's that one game. of those games you, you like think you're going to play for just a couple hours. You think you played for a couple hours with the clock, like six, seven, eight hours pass and you don't know how it happened. Yeah. It's just, you get so immersed in it. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm excited for it. Uh, Zeke, when do you depart for Berlin? Is that tomorrow? Uh, in about 13 hours ish from now. <clears throat> you have a 5 a.m. flight or wait, it's 3 yeah, p.m. Dude. You have a 3 a.m. flight. No, it's it's twelve plus one thirteen. Yeah, but so it's three o'clock five, for you right five. now. Okay, I guess it is five. It's, yeah, it, yeah it's four o'clock for me now. now. Sure, time zones. Yeah. Let's talk about them. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> they're down. Thrilling content. We should all just have one Thrilling time stuff. around the world. We should. Yeah. No, they're a bad time. <laughs> they're a bad time. Uh, now, where where do you? Uh, can we talk about your flight path? Because Erin departed sure. today. And her flight path was not good, but she ended up getting first class out of it. So she she rolled well on that luck. Dude, that's oh, wow. fucking I I actually got I got a, a economy plus upgrade. So that was nice. nice. <laughs> I didn't get first class, but economy plus hey, it's something. That's not bad. LA Groom. Yeah. But yeah. but I got economy plus on the on thankfully on the long flight because your boy has to take four goddamn flights to get to Berlin. Hey. I have to take one one to Denver, I think. Yep, and then Denver to New York, New Jersey, and then New Jersey to some place like in I'm not sure so where Frankfurt? in in England. Oh, but then England to to uh, Berlin. You might you might be on the same England to Berlin flight that Aaron has. Maybe I'm not 100 percent certain, but I think she has. If like she a, left. If she left already, no, 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 no. no. She, if her, she, unless her layovers are. She has a flight that uh, leaves in a couple hours and then connects somewhere, I think, at like, I don't know, 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. So, well, that's when you're leaving. Yeah, never mind. That's completely wrong. I'm, I'm making shit up. Yeah, there's no way that could actually Oh, oh it's, it's only three flights. I'm sorry. I, I actually do get to go from um, Newark, New Jersey to Berlin, directly to Berlin. Berlin so. Oh, okay. Not bad. I remember I was looking at other cheaper flights and there was like, Hey, for an extra sixty bucks, you can skip a step. And I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude! Let's fuck that shit." <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, oh, you you started. That's right. You started your fucking Sekiro playthrough. You and Adam both. Mm-hmm. I forgot that's mm-hmm. a thing. Uh, now, last week on Drop Frames, when you were muted, I said that you would hate the game because you couldn't play a mage character straight up. But I was wrong. <laughs> Apparently, you're just. You're also really good at it, which I'm kind of upset that you're actually good at the game. So <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. you're walking well, up to bosses where you're like, "Oh, okay, I'll just three shot this guy." I'm like, I, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> okay, okay, let's stop it right there. Let's stop it right there, and hold the phone because uh, it's been my experience through talking to people who have played through the game that. Certain bosses click for certain people and certain bosses don't. Like, mm. there were, I mean, I was 
not to not to give away who it is, but like I was on the gun chick mini boss oh, she's for fucking ever. Okay. Yeah. But like uh uh what's his name? Um whatever the the the, the guy at the top guy of the, at tower. the top. Yeah. The guy at the top of the tower, he just made sense to me. I was like, Oh, I, I can do this guy. But that chick took me like four hours to beat, whereas he took three times. Like and that's that's been the case. I've talked to many people, they're like, Yeah. Well, you're taking so long on on this this boss, but I took a long time on this other one, and it's just like some they're so different as far as their their uh, how aggressive they are, their move set that it it's you can find your niche and what you're good at within these sets of bosses. Right. Like I know this this boss is like rhythm like tang 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 like it's it's like music mm -hmm. it's like i hear this this is rock and roll but i don't get fucking jazz i don't get like you know i can't do the blues but i can do rock and roll and that boss was a rock and roll boss mm. i get that that makes sense yeah, yeah. I, I spent the most amount of time on the guy at the top and then the final boss that was like a i think like an hour and a half and then the final boss was seven hours so maybe you just nail the final boss and it's just two or three times and you're done We'll see. I seriously doubt it. <laughs> we'll see. He took me a long time just to, I think it was one of those things where I went from like the optional boss, spend some time on him. And then I just, it, they're mm -hmm. so completely opposite in terms of what you have to do that I, there's no break in between to like reassess myself or relearn the game. Uh, Cause you have to play mm -hmm. so different, but yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's been, it's been a fun time watching you play because you just destroyed uh, that guy at the top. And I was just sitting in chat. just like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this, is, this is upsetting to watch <laughs> well i mean did you see the the how long it took on the first mini boss like that was like several mm. hours of trying to figure out like oh is that the spear but, guy and that's but that's a, that's a great thing about the 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 FromSoft games once you got it you kind of got it was that and you can go back through it super fast you're talking about the spear guy that's true yeah yeah no, 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 i'm talking hunter. about i'm talking about the guy who breaks out of his he's in a he's in a he's held in like a stock oh okay yeah gotcha yeah okay yeah, i love dancing so around spoilers yeah it's good it's fun times the funny the funny thing the only i think the only complaint that i have about the game like yes it's hard and it's hard in a way that if you're good at dark souls or bloodborne you may have to unlearn some stuff like for me the hardest thing was not just dodging away all the time and not trying to stray for all and being like nope that does not work even though the control scheme seems the same yeah above and beyond like it being difficult the analogy that I had for the way that the game is structured was that it's like FromSoft are incredibly skilled abstract painters, right? They're Jackson Pollock. They can make these like incredibly beautiful impressionist paintings. And in Sekiro, their first game with like a cogent, straightforward narrative, someone said to them, draw a circle. And they were like, uh, here's the feeling of a circle. And you're like, no, just, just draw a circle. Just like, Give me characters that I give a shit about and point me in a certain direction. Like, if you want to make a game with a narrative, like, do it. And they're like, we, uh, we don't know how to do that. So uh, here's some characters that talk for too long. And then here's, like, a cutscene you don't care about. Sure. And here's an optional area 10 minutes into the game. So they're, it's really funny. It's, it's funny watching them do that. Be like, uh, uh, okay, well, we're going to try to make this straightforward game. But they're, they're they're not very good at that. But everything else about it is technically like very very good, even when it's super hard. I think it maybe clicks especially better. It yeah, I, I think it clicked better for me, and more easily for me for a couple of reasons. One, because I was never I, I played through the Souls games maybe once, maybe twice, but also because yeah. they're kind of it's kind of like the combat. I wish I could have done in Dark Souls. Mm. I got like mm. like I of course I would use magic users, but. Like every game, I would like I would switch up and be like, "All right, I'm gonna do a shield. I'm gonna do a sword. I'm gonna use the shield." It's like, fucking, you don't use the shield. Like, use the shield for like doing the like the parry and repost. But like, that's I wanted to use the shield to and have it be effective to like block shit. Yeah, it's like that. Nah, yeah, nah, I mean, some of the time maybe, but most of the time, nah. That shield just gonna be a fucking burden, or it's gonna be on your back yeah. because it gives you a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah you always use the energy or the the stamina regen shield so you just two hand everything yeah yeah but Sekiro, you actually stand and you bang toe to toe sometimes and i fucking love it yeah mm -hmm. and the the other thing too i think is uh phenomenal uh, the only way that the combat works is because the animations are so good 
like the the boss animations yeah. and the enemy uh both enemy ai and animations tied to that ai are just flawless like they're they're so telling the only thing that's like kind of ambiguous is when they do the random little red yes. thing and you're like well yep. is that horizontal that's- or is that going to be a lunge attack uh i guess we're going to gamble <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's and and it's like dice. that's why that's why and i'm I'm on that i'm on that top of the tower boss uh right now and mm. i feel like he's very much that where you're like okay here's a flash of the danger kanji something bad is about to happen but i do not have enough information until it's almost too late yeah to be able to decide how to react to that um there have definitely been some situations where i feel like i've lucked out in an encounter i'm like oh i only beat that because i guessed it was going to be a lunge. And obviously it varies from, from character to character. Some have much longer tells than others, but yeah, you have to kind of guess and then learn the window for like the type of weapon they're using. And if they're animated in a certain way. And, yeah. yeah. I didn't, I, I fucked up because I didn't learn or even have the skill on how to do the lunge counter till the final boss. So I had uh, to learn yeah. how to do that on the final boss, which is, Probably not the best place to do that, especially when no. you can't practice it anymore. <laughs> so that was uh, that was an interesting experience. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, overall, though, I'm I'm interested to see uh, how there, there's some other bosses that you guys haven't hit yet that I'm that some would say are giant roadblocks in the game. So I'm I'm super interested to see how you guys uh, either cruise yeah, through should, them or, I should or be run able... into them. If Zeke if Zeke's going to Berlin, I should be able to catch up because you've you've played a lot more than I have. But I've got a couple of streams scheduled for while you're away, so we'll we'll try to keep pace and then we can talk about it when we're both done. Yeah, that'll be good. Uh, Adam, what else you been doing besides the uh, Sekiro? Um, I don't know, pissing off the internet, I guess. Nice. Uh, the that's, last that's always the last, fun. The last couple the last couple of days, I've been in two very heated Twitter debates about whether GMs fudging their dice is cheating or not. Um, yeah, it turns out a lot of people have GMs that just make up the results of rolls and don't actually roll in front of their players and just get to decide yeah. what happens. So from now on in Court of Swords, nobody's ever going to roll dice anymore. You guys can just do whatever you want and I'll never kill your characters or do anything bad to them. Yeah. Let me uh, tell you as a does player, anybody want, I love the yeah, ambiguity of want, just like, well, Adam might've just made that up. Oh, well, let's just go with it. <laughs> that sounds yeah, great. No. That's super. I'm super into that. Oh, I can't. I just can't be bothered. Like, if the dice say you take a thousand damage, you take a fucking thousand damage. Like, yeah, I'm I'm playing the game. Um, yeah. I will say, I I like back in back before any of Twitch or whatever. I roll. I uh, DM'd a total of three times. Okay. And I will tell you that during that time, I did fudge rolls while I was DMing, and not for any other reason than I. Was a was a, I set up stuff poorly for my for my players? Yeah, and that was my bad. And I was trying to rectify it by changing the roles and stuff. But what I didn't realize is it's it relates to the rule of of doing improv. The like one rule is say yes and offer something. And I know it sounds weird, mm. but the interesting choice is always to accept what happens. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, they agree. say that a lot. I was reading through one of the books. I think it was fucking Xanathar's expansion. You, you know, don't guy, read everything. the fucking D and D books, Max. Come on I, now, don't try to I pull did. that over on us. I what did, did you? I was what reading did you? It at what the did you read in this cafe book? while I ate by myself? Oh, <laughs> um, thanks. Thanks for bringing it there, JP. Now I had to have details so that way it <laughs> yeah. legitimize wait, my story. Way to make people feel sorry mm-hmm. for you to cover your lie. All right, I'm on. I you, would man. eat with you, Max. Oh, JP, I've been sick for almost a week now. <laughs> All right, Droopy, what did you what did you learn from this Dungeons and Dragons book? No, it, it says extensively in there multiple multiple times that yes, like these rules are there, so you have like you know something to reference and stuff. But at the end of the day, what the GM says overrules that in most in most circumstances. Like whatever whatever the GM you know ends up. It, it's 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 supposed to be like a, a, a rule set that you are guided by, you know? If it ends up not working with your particular scenario and context and stuff, and there's shit that we've hacked and stuff, then you go to what, you know, what your GM uh as far yeah, as I understand. I think the, that was my interpretation. The thing the thing that everybody the thing that everybody's getting on my ass about is that <laughs> like for example, okay, we're doing we're doing a fight. Let's and, get into uh, Max, it. Let's get, read some tweets, live tweets. 
Court of Swords. Here we go. <laughs> we're doing. We're, say we're say we're doing a fight in Court of Swords, right? And uh, Max, you got ten hit points left. And yeah. I roll in secret. I roll a crit against you, and I'm going to deal you like forty damage. And you're all by yourself, and nobody can save you. I Normal. say. I say, yeah, I say, sorry, Max, you take 40 damage. Looks like Berg is unconscious, make some death saves. Maybe you're dead, right? But there are, there are GMs and, and pundits on Twitter who are like, no, no, you can cheat. You can just be like, oh, looks like you missed. You get another turn, Max. And it's like, what? I don't, I, don't, well, I just don't yeah. understand. Like, for me, I don't see the point. Because in that case, why do I ever roll anything at all? Like, why not just be like... You yeah. take five damage. Yeah, okay. He swings at you. you, you he hits you because I feel like hitting you, but I'll yeah. never kill you unless I want to kill you. Uh, yeah, that's just, stupid. That, that gets rid of the whole point of the game. Like, that's that's why you don't play games that are stupid. Com- here, I don't. here, Adam, I'll take some of the heat off of you from the internet and I'll direct it. I'm really good at this. I can make people hate me within seconds. So here we go. And then he'll just he'll tell them to email right, me. The right. same people that cry about Sekiro being too hard <laughs> and using a cheat system for the final boss and then write an article about NPC Gamer are the same people that fudge rules in D&D. There we go. All the hate. <laughs> just bring it. Let's go. <laughs> just put all the hate on there. <laughs> just put yeah, it like, I'm not, I'm, not here to, I'm not here to tell everybody that there's, like, one true way of playing D&D. I'm just saying, and I, I said this in the, in the original tweet that got everybody all fired up. I was like, these are some opinions I have that people always like fucking coming at me for. It's an opinion. If I were playing with somebody and they were DMing and they would play to like save me, I'd be like, fuck off. Don't coddle me. Like, yeah. if I take a critical hit and I die, I take a critical hit and I die. We're playing Dungeons and Dragons. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, mm-hmm. that's what I want. So, yeah, I just, I just think that, like, I don't know. It's interesting watching that and how people can't seem to understand that an opinion doesn't mean they have to change the way they act. Like, if you don't agree with me, then fucking, I won't play with you. Right? Like, if I had a GM who's like, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to roll behind the screen and I just get to make stuff up, I'd be like, bye. I don't want to play. So, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Well, cool. Have fun, cheater, with your cheater friends. Like, this is not interesting to me. Um, I do want to hear your thoughts yeah. about, like, if it's, if it's like, like me, I was an amateur, it was, it was my fault. Like, when it's the fault of the DM for setting up something and there were certain things or circumstances that you didn't think about and mm. it's, completely like swayed one way or the other meaning like oh shit i didn't even think that this you know would affect this as much as it did and i fucked up and that kind of thing like what do you do in that situation i mean like you're in the middle of a fucking adventure and they're like about to like get just uh, like myrtleized or but but that doesn't that doesn't happen so fast you can't adjust right so you can you can be like you start a fight and you're like oh shit there are like too many goblins so then what you do is you're like, all right, after they kill a third of these goblins, half of them run off because they're scared, right? That's in the narrative. That's a thing. It feels okay. like you're not cheating. You're just making a decision for the characters. So there's lots of ways to, to kind of come at that. Um, the other thing you can do is just be like, you know what? Like, I was designing this, and I just I fucked this up. Like, there's too many monsters here. Can we just, like, I'm going to cut half of them. Does that feel okay for you guys? Okay, back to the game. Let's play. But then you get the okay. people who scream immersion, and they're like, no, you can't talk about the game while you're playing it. Like admitting that you admitting admitting that you fucked up is totally okay. Like you're allowed to just be like, ah, you know what? I I, I hecked that up. You shouldn't like if I gave you a magic item that turned out to be way too powerful, I would just say to you, hey, it's totally imbalancing the game. Can we talk about doing something about that? And then I would I would be like, all right, so in the game, let's have it stolen from you, and that'll give you an enemy to chase, or let's yeah. like add an additional cost or. Whatever. Adam you know, was trying like, to get me to change my HP, and I told him, "Look, you'll never GM again on this channel if you do that." And then we made, uh, you know, we, yeah. we worked it out. I yeah. kept my HP, and he's still GMing. So here we go. Here we are. Yeah, it's good. It's fine. It's Remember fun. that time I had a hammer that stole life and healed me? That was sick. Yeah, but yeah, you I mean, lost things, that on your things, own, right? Things ebb and flow, right? Yeah, like sometimes. And the other, the other thing I think is you don't need to cheat for the players because D and D is built. Or the players, it's not balanced. Like if it was balanced, the players would lose half the fights they got into. That's what balance is. But it's not. It's the game is built for the players to succeed and to to do a good job most of the time. And so you really have to go out of your way. See the beginning of Court of Swords. You really have to go out of your way to like make D and D hard. And so there's no there's no point in trying to like ease the the characters. Like you just let them you let them do their thing. You play the game, and if the roles come out, they come out, and that's how it goes. Yeah. Been working for us so far. I agree. 
Uh, Mr. Gassy Mexican, how sick yeah. were you on like a scale of one to like sick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can I hear that again? Like so sick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was so <laughs> sick. Uh, Wonder Person Neutron. I have not been, <laughs> have not been this sick <laughs> in a very long time. I haven't had the flu in a very long time. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't regularly get flu shots either. That will be changing because this was horrible. Um. I'm not some sort of anti-vaxxer or anything. Man, like let's that. just take it. Let's just take <laughs> like that conversation fully into the. Did you see? I got so fucking pissed off this in New York. The fucking like health organization decided that they have to call like an emergency because there's a measles outbreak because some dumb fucks decided wow. that they should take all their kids to a party so they can get used to the measles fucking virus so they don't get it. And that's where people got the fucking mi- a thing that was goddamn eradicated in 2000. Mm-hmm. It's nope. back because these nope. fucking idiots decided to take their kids to a measles party. Measles. Mm. Good stuff. <sighs> I got so upset. I did not Sorry. I, had, I did didn't have an outlet me. for that. I was just screaming no. in my room alone. My cats were running away from me. <laughs> yeah. Listen, bad. JP, it sucks that they had the measles. But me, JP, me, I was sick. Me. <laughs> Let's circle back um, to Max. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the I was flu. Sick of the flu. I got influenza A and it fucking sucked for like several days. I was hovering around like 100, 101 fever every night with breaks of, you know, not. Fuck me, man. The flu sucks so much. It, yeah, it, doesn't sound it wasn't fun. throwing up flu or anything like that. Everything else, body aches, you know, chills, sweats, crazy dreams, um, fevers, off. I still, I'm pretty, pretty much good now other than just still having phlegm and shit and you know congestion and a little bit of coughing that up and what sucks about that is honestly the worst part about that is i'll cough so much and like the pressure and shit of just me coughing and making that like lurching you know and stuff and tightening up the muscles and stuff it just makes me have a fucking headache (laughs) because i'm throwing my head around so much as you were saying that i was like what is the over under on him saying he pooped himself here we go okay where's the (laughs) this? You guys don't understand <laughs> Oops, how many pants myself. and underwear I've gone through just today. <laughs> Listen, it's no one would blame you. It's not your fault. It's just, you know, hey, it happens. Yeah. you're getting older. It happens. Also, just the timing, obviously, coming back from PAX, already having like a week that I wasn't streaming to into another week that I basically didn't stream. It's just, you guys, it's mm. anyone's That's ever experienced. It's one, of, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the worst fucking things as a content creator. And there's nothing you can do. Because yeah, you're just screwed. You tweet like, God, I really want to stream for you guys, but I feel like death. Maybe I'll try a stream and everyone's like, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Take care of yourself. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. I'm feeling a little bit better the next day. And they're like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm like, you guys don't understand. I want to eat. I want to keep <laughs> earning. Yeah. Yeah. We should. I, I didn't I think had, about this. We need to all go take a shot of something since it's uh, tax period and we're all just fucked for the next week. But no, I finally got all my paperwork and I got to file it tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to that to that end, Max, I did have one time somebody. It's nice when you're sick and you're like, oh, I can't. Like, I really want to stream and I can't. Sorry, everybody. I'm gonna like take it easy. And people on Twitter are like, you're, you're like, you know, don't worry about it. We'll be here when you get back. That's really nice. It's super great to hear. One time, somebody sent me fifty bucks and was like, "Don't work here. Fuck off. Go lie down." I was like. Thanks. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. I'm going to do. It's hard, though. Next scenario, I'm be like, someone send me 50 bucks right now. And I'll <laughs> <laughs> send me 50 bucks. Not hey, man. I'll stream. Well, you know, I'll do it, you motherfuckers. Is, and, Don't make me do it. <laughs> I got it. And I got to tell you, JP, you, you set a bad example because when I first started streaming Uh-oh. on my own, I always thought about, I always thought about whenever I get kind of sick, I'm like, all right, what would JP do? Because you remember that episode of Swan Song? Oh, where, like. <laughs> You were just kind of like sitting there quiet for like most yeah. of the first half of the episode, just kind of yeah. getting like pale and just like sinking down in your seat a little bit. And on the break, you're like, hey, hey, are you okay, JP? And you're like, yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, the episode's well, over. No, and then you yeah. were like, and later, and later you were like, yeah, yeah, please tell, tell I, everyone what happened. So we started the show and I thought I would be fine. I was having kidney stones uh-huh. at the, at the, uh, during Swan Song. And we started the yep. show and I was like, all right, I'm just going to pop a couple of these fucking pain pills and let's just go. Let's just go for it. So <laughs> yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah, we got like an hour and a half in or something like that. 
And mm-hmm. then we took a break and everyone was like, hey, you're all right. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm just going to go lay down on the floor. And I literally just lay down on the floor because if you ever had kidney stones, the most, it's just, you're just uncomfortable. There's no, there's just a huge amount of pain and nothing that you can do is relieving that pain unless you're just like sitting in a fucking bathtub or something like that in a really awkward position. So anyways, we go back after the break. We're like an hour in. I'm laying on the floor with the microphone right next to me. Uh, not on camera or anything. And I just type in Skype like, Hey guys, I'm going to end the show. I, I can't actually, <laughs> I can't talk anymore. Uh, and then I went to the ER later that night. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'm, about I'm that. Glad that Every was time the first I'm like, example. I'm glad I, I like <laughs> looked you in the eye. I was like, Adam, don't fucking take a break. All right. I'm dying right now. <laughs> You're right. Fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, now I think I'm like, oh, I got a cold. I got the flu. At least it's not kidney stones. Yeah. I can just, I'll power through it. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm glad I set that example. I'm glad I, I mm-hmm. did that now. Two years later. <laughs> Actually, that was like five years ago. That was a while back. That was like five years ago. Yeah, that was a long yeah, time. Yeah, that was a ways. Anyways, Max, you're all good now? You're you're on the up and up, it seems. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing better. Um it's just yeah. With with that and, and you know, obviously tax stuff and all that. And then you know what? To add on top of it too, my uh our lease is up like here in June or whatever, so because we're, we're moving to Austin. Mm-hmm. My um, my landlord hits me up and he's like, "Hey, also, uh, I'm gonna come by and I'm gonna want to inspect, you know, the house with my realtor just to make sure, you know, figure out work I got to do before putting it back on the market." And it's like tomorrow. <laughs> so, oh yeah, that's always the best. That's that's fun. So I've been like still partially sick while like you know making sure we don't look like we live like animals here because I'm like, oh fuck, he's coming with the realtor and all that shit. So it's just been a lot of stress. It's good stuff. It's been fun. <laughs> but I'm here. Hi. Yeah, I think I'm here, right? Yeah, you're here. You're still not in bed. You're not. Okay. You're not. I'm just, just making sure it's not now a fever yet. dream. You got up. Now we get to now we get to play some. We get to play some some Dungeons and Dragons. We where nothing bad ever happens, especially to Max. Yeah, let's stress Max. Out. Max, we need three goals from you. You're gonna go first this week. So yeah. Um. Well, before I mean, before we do, there's there's a there's a there's a special. We should talk about a special announcement uh, today. Uh, Zeke and I are getting married. So that's nice. Yeah. that's nice. Everybody nice. can yeah. So we're gonna it's nice. about time. Congrats about yeah. time. I yeah. was wondering. Thank you. I was Thank wondering you. when. Yep. Yeah. 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 We uh we we eloped to Japan. Uh just so everybody <clears throat> Congratulations. Yeah. Nobody you. else is is engaged. Nobody at all. Certainly not. Uh and uh yeah, let's play some Dungeons and Dragons. You wanna mm-hmm. roll that recap? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. We have a recap. I forgot about that. Yeah. Let me That's right. Do that. Yeah, some of us w- can use that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Here's the recap. Yeah, wait. Previously on Court of Swords. This one's a bit horrific, so buckle up. Maharib, running to the sound of a gunshot, discovers a terrifying floating creature resembling a mixture of eyeballs, the head of a human infant, and disembodied fingers. Gun Princess is stricken, laying face down in the swamp, surrounded by enormous hungry grubs. After a brief attempt to hide, Maharib is spotted and succumbs to the same dark energy that took down Gun Princess. Meanwhile, Ramus Berg and One Last Job visit the home of Where Did I Leave My Aorta, a flesh crafter who has taken on the form of a cluster of arms, living in some sort of igloo of living bodies. Ramus doesn't react well and spends the next scene puking while tiny awful homunculi gather up his barf, singing, Don't Waste the Biomatter. Aorta turns out to be a decent, uh, thing, and offers Berg some alterations in exchange for an examination. He ponders this choice. Yota and the king play tea time, and she shows her fickle side, denying Yota what he desires. Looks like he's going to have to play the pet elephant a little bit longer. Maharib and Bugfucker are introduced by way of Maharib heroically retrieving the heart of the now-eaten gun princess and returning it for safekeeping and reincarnation. The two make surprisingly good companions. Ramus and Berg end up at Miss Tippett's home for future corpses, a kind of guild hall and inn, and agree to take on a job. A prophet has foreseen the opening of a mighty vein, and last job needs a stout adventuring type to plummet. First, they have to get reunited with Maharib and Yota, the latter of whom Ramus discovers, by way of divine magic, is somewhere inside the playhouse of the divine comedy. They enter. 
Adam, I can't take Bugfucker seriously because I can't say his name. I can't just be like, Bugfucker, <laughs> you doing all right? Like, I can't just have a conversation. You got to change his name. That's all I'm asking. Nope, that's, that's, okay. that's that's his name. I mean, you could give him, you could give him a reason give him a nickname. to change. I'm a, no, I'm just going to yeah, tell him, hey, I can't him... call you Bugfucker anymore, all right? We're going to call you Bug. Yeah. Yeah, you could give them a reason. Remember, names are names are different in the Court of the Void, right? They they use them to um, like they're self chosen. Uh, though in Bugfucker's case, I think probably someone else called him that as an insult, and he was like, "Fine, that's my name now. Get out of here." It's like uh, that old let's... joke that like, uh, see that bridge I built that, and see that house I built that, but you fuck one bug, and that's <laughs> exactly. your name forever. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. All right, let's do some goals. Um, yeah, yeah, let's do goals. So, uh, Ramus, Ramus, and Berg, uh, you guys are currently uh, you're currently together, um, and uh, you know where Yotazo is, um, but haven't haven't connected with uh, with him. Um, and then Maharib, I kind of I kind of have an idea of what you're you're going for, and you're outside of the um, uh, outside of the, the city still. Um, yep. So, Ramus, what do you what do you want to do for your goals today? Um, I'll keep the other two, and my third goal will be um, reunite with Yotaso. Okay, and what do you what do you uh, say your other goals out loud for? Say them for the audience. Uh, find a way back. Um, that'd be my main goal for this whole arc, and then mm -hmm. find a way to disguise Berg, and then yep. uh, now reunite with Yotaso. Perfect. Okay, and then Berg, uh, what do you want yours to uh, yours to be? Um, I think I kind of just have to keep the same. Um, yeah, I've got, void, I've got two. Yeah. yeah, and then I've got two. I got two for you: escape the void and create a disguise. Oh yeah, because we did find here. a way to strengthen. Yeah, really. yeah. You you had that interaction with Aorta, and you managed to like tough it out. And, and yeah, it would make sense to to, to yeah mirror Ramuses of reuniting with Yotazo because that's kind of what we're doing. Uh -huh. really what we're doing so okay so reunite i'm gonna take the dan approach and max uh -huh. these goals get some xp every show he gets xp every yeah. show adam it's true you're yelling at yourself dude you're not yelling at every me. show right. dan look at me dan look up at me <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's not my fault there you, you didn't prepare your goals ahead of time boom <laughs> yeah God, his ass. yep He's racist so, in real okay. life too. Yeah, <laughs> he just plays I mean, himself. You know, all the best are peers too. The apple doesn't, <laughs> apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I guess. Uh, it just happens to be a crab apple. Uh, okay, um, <laughs> Maharib. Uh, actually, let's go with Yotazo because you're the three of them are connected. So, uh, Yota, what do you want your goals to be? Um, okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to keep the uh, two of them. Uh, one was getting good enough with my new master to garner a boon. And because uh, uh, yep. I was so close last time, and I feel like I can just a little bit of pushing, I can possibly do it. Uh, and find a way to alleviate my addiction uh, slash cravings. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, my second goal is, or my third goal is to rejoin the party, if I can. Uh, okay. So it's going to be everyone gets that goal, or nobody gets it. Yep. This session. And also, I. I Leveled up in case uh, the chat want or the audience want, or oh, whatever. That's right. Yeah. Do you want to? You want to? What did you? Did you do anything special? What did you do with your level up? Nothing super special. Uh, I got a instead of getting the ability increase, I I kind of did. I I took the, um, took the feat, which was uh, resilient, resilient feat. So I got a plus one in constitution. So br uh, brought me up to a fourteen, and also gives me. Um, Proficiency in those saving throws. So, constitution saving throws, I now have proficiency in, and my uh, hit points have jumped considerably. Uh, my full max is now 83. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's right, because it, it backfills quite a lot. Nice. Let's see if that's okay. reflected. Yep, it's here. retroactive constitution. Yep. Cool. All right. Uh, and then uh, Maharib, uh, what, do you, uh, what do you want for your goals? We will keep the same ones. Uh, learn an insight about death, reconnect with Gun Princess, and enter the necropolis. Okay. 
Cool. All right. Well, so let's let's start with uh, let's start with Yota Zo. So Yota, you really have no sense of. I mean, this place is confusing to begin with, but some time has passed, and you know you've you've rested, and you've been fed, and you've been bathed, and you've been dressed up, and back and forth, and so on. But really, you're a you're a prisoner in a gilded cage. Right? You're spending uh, you're spending your time waiting to speak with the king, and then when you do, when you're in the presence of the king, it's just a lot of nothing. Right? Um, they you you have learned that she is a she's a fickle creature, uh, as many um, young girls are, and uh, she quite enjoys the power that she has, especially over you. You're being treated as a, a plaything or a, or a pet, um, and I think that when we when we see you, we we fade back in. Uh, you are being fitted for something. Uh, there is a, a a handful of human attendants who are measuring your arms and your legs and your the the circumference of your skull. And uh, yeah, they're taking they're taking measurements uh, for you. Okay. And um, uh, real quick before we go on, because yeah. this this is I w- want to uh, do a goal change because. I wasn't oh, thinking yeah. of what like Ma or um what Yozo actually really wants. So mm-hmm. one of the things would be get that fucking jug back. Okay. Get my get my my uh Wintaru back. Yeah, so, where is it um, right now? You don't know, right? That, no idea. They it took was, it off me because I got knocked out by tied the guard. To you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's right. It was just tied um, to you. Along. You don't get playthings. You are the plaything child. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take okay. the the boon one off. Okay. And I will replace it with. Uh, <laughs> re get my my shit. Um, <laughs> find my uh wine to room and. Sh- it sounds yeah. like, like one of the fucking. I don't know, like a real dirty country star. That's the name of their album. You know what I mean? Retrieve, retrieve my shit. shit. That's the fucking word. No, I could not no, think listen. of the word retrieve. No regrets. Uh, so mm-hmm. you want to you want to get your jug back? Find a way to alleviate your addiction. I love when you have yep. opposing goals. Uh, and then what's your third one? You want to rejoin the party? Rejoin the party. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Sure. Okay. So you're you're Sorry. being you're being you're being measured and and what have you, um, and what is what is Yotazo's like body language? What do we know about how Yotazo feels about this situation when we when we see you? Are you resigned? Are you upbeat? Are you twitchy? What are we seeing? Um. Well, overall, I mean, overall, this is, I think Yotazo has, has a knack for looking at things as they are and as they are now, it's not, not too shabby. It's, it's a, it's a, it fucking could be a lot worse. I could be down in the dark deep depths with that giant goddamn beast of, of a thing. Instead I'm up here and I'm being treated very well, mm-hmm. be it a cage or not. It's, it's I'm healthy. I'm, I feel good. Um, right, but there is that nagging, like, when am I going to get my next drink? Like, wh- wh- where mm-hmm. is that? So it's it's always a constant thing, and I'm constantly trying to put like that in sentences, like, oh, nice day, you know, go well with this day, a nice cup of brandy or you know, shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. You're you're never above like a seventy percent because you're sober. Uh, yeah, yeah, I hear that. Okay, so you're 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 trying to make the best of a, a weird situation, um, and so you're you're being measured, and these these servants are taking notes about they're fitting you for something you haven't been told what for, mm-hmm. and you hear coming down a hallway. Everything around here is is made of uh, like stone, like marble, so you can hear footsteps quite easily. But this is particularly loud. You hear a loud, a set of loud footsteps. Um, they have the like quality the sound quality of like a horse's hooves or like a kind of that hollow kind of clopping sound um okay and uh yeah they're getting they're getting louder uh and they they seem to be they seem to be coming coming this way 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Is there anyone around me or am I by myself? Uh, just the attendants. Okay. Mm. That's an unfamiliar sound. Uh, I'm, I'm actually just kind of like talking to whoever, whatever attendant's closest. Mm. Uh-huh. What might that be? They don't say anything because you get the impression they've been instructed not to speak to you, but they kind of glance at each other and look down and kind of look around. Um, can you make an insight check for me? You betcha. 23. Whatever it is, you can tell mm-hmm. that they hope that it just keeps on going by, that it's not headed for this room. Okay. There's, a, there's some nervousness. Mm. I see. I hope. Uh, I hope the bell isn't tolling for me yet. <laughs> so it gets louder, and then <clears throat> stop. Just outside the door, and you hear a rap outside my door. On the, yeah. yeah, and you hear a rapping on the door. Just three sort of wooden sound. And the servants all kind of look at each other. And there's if, a voice. If they hesitate, I'll go up and open oh, they the door. Do. <laughs> okay. So you're like you're you're like in a loincloth, basically. Um mm-hmm. and they there's there's some some like eh, ah, as you leave, like you step off the little platform you're on, and there's like a set of, of polished steel like mirrors. You step down and they they like kind of like fuss over you moving. But uh mm-hmm. yeah, they 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 don't stop you. And uh, yeah. and you make your way over to the uh, to the door. Yep. Okay. And then from somewhere, like in the distance, like I hear a voice saying, "Don't open the door." <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. A voice from um, heaven. Yeah. Exactly. From an egg. Oh, don't do it, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, I open the door. And uh, very, you know, just normally open the door. And whoever it is, I will react accordingly if I need to bow or whatever the fuck. Yeah. So you open the door, and on the other side, you see an old man. Now, he's at eye level with you because he's wearing these stilt sandals. So they're wooden sandals. This is what was making the the clip-clop noise. They're they're sandals, but they're like a good foot tall. So he's kind of like balanced on them. And he's, yeah, he's an old man. He has a uh, a wig on, uh, like a, a powdered wig that hangs down in front of him. Uh, he has a, a fancy, like an ascot. Uh, he's wearing everything. He's wearing is like gold and uh, gold and black silk, big puffy sleeves. Um, and he has his face painted. It's it's white, and he's got big red circles uh, on his cheeks. Uh, he has a big waxed mustache, and yeah, all over, just like wrinkly and and bent. In one hand, he's holding a cane, uh, and on the end of the cane uh, is a a fist, a clutched fist with its, its knuckles out. He used to batter on the door. And in his other hand, he holds a delicate uh, silver chain, um, very, very thin silver chain that leads up above the door frame to the neck of a creature you cannot see. Uh, the entire back of this guy, like behind him, everything behind him is uh, is taken up by this this beast of flesh. There is some enormous humanoid. Uh, it is uh, almost entirely nude. It's wearing those like kind of rubber, like sting pants from Dune. He has like, just like briefs on made out of like black, some black material. Uh, and it's his body is covered in scars and tattoos that are faded and tattooed over and then scarred over uh, huge arms. This thing has got to be like nine feet tall and like, six feet wide at the shoulders, but you can't see its face or its head. And the chain leads up ostensibly to its neck. And uh, that is what you see. So how do you, how do you respond? Um, I, I just, I present the, the room to them. I'm not sure. And I kind of, I mean, I, I try and show as, as much like deference Without, you know, overdoing it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Make a, um, there's no, like, etiquette roll. So, like, it's a first impression roll. So make a charisma save. There was etiquette in second edition. Okay. 
Yeah, there's a lot of skills in earlier versions of the game. It's a charisma save. Yeah. I think first impressions is a good way to use charisma saves because we never we never get to use those. Great. Perfect. My worst tap. Eight. Big eight. Okay. All right. So the um the figure kind of like curls its his lip back uh slightly, but you get out of the way. And he looks up, and he's like, Come along and tugs on it and walks into the walks into the room with a little like and he takes these little steps because he'd fall over otherwise. Uh, and he, he walks into the room. And he looks around. And there's a, a groan from the creature behind him as he ducks down. And he puts his massive hands on the inside of the door and squeezes himself into the room. This thing's hands are like as big as your torso. Like he could pick you up with one hand. Um, and yeah, and he comes in and you can now see... The other end of this delicate chain leads up to a uh, a collar, a metal collar with spikes that are embedded into the neck and, and clavicle of this enormous thing. And uh, its head is um, just a mouth. You don't see, it has no eyes or no nose and a huge oversized mouth with teeth the size of like dinner plates. Uh, and yeah, he, he crouches down and he's very top heavy. He's like triangle shaped. Uh, he has these huge arms, and he, he comes in and kind of like walks on his knuckles a little bit, and comes into the uh, comes into the room. And so you're saying uh, this this guy looks like a child made him out of clay and then made him real big. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's like a bad kid's drawing of a muscly man. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the uh, and so the the old man comes in. He looks around and he he says, uh, "So." You're the king's new plaything, are you? Mm. How much to look I at? I have that honor. What do they call you where you're from? Mm. My name is Yotazo, but that is not my name anymore. I didn't ask what your name was now. You know, going around telling people your name is Yota Zo is going to be a good way to get you recognized from not being from around here. Haven't you noticed? Our names are different than yours. Yes, I have noticed. Um, it seems you take your names from um, things you do, or things you are, or... Things other people have observed, and they give you these names. <clears throat> he nods, and his, his wig like slips forward slightly. And he pushes it back up on his head, and he uh, he says, uh, "Yes, you're a bit of a disappointment. The way the king speaks of you, she's very excited to have her plaything back." Are you happy here now? Mm. As happy as one can be when they are very well taken care of, but the freedom is not allowed. Freedom is an illusion. We all serve someone. Isn't that right, boy? He like tugs on the chain. And the, the creature, like, groans. And he's like, Bruh. you can't tell if he's groaning in agreement or not. Uh, and uh, and the, the old man says, um, well, after all that the king had said, we had to come and look at you for ourselves. I'm the queen. This is the page. Say hello, boy. And the, the page, like, uh, just kind of nods its featureless face. Does it have ears? No, it's just like a. Someone described it as a thumb with a mouth, and that's okay. that's a pretty good way of looking. At it. It's a a lump of of flesh that is head shaped with a big mouth on the front and no other features. Okay, well then, out of uh, like, she asked him. Uh, the queen asked the page a question. Or said Sammy, and, and Yota mm. would say, mm, I, I see no ears on this, on the page. Mm. Mm. 
I'm curious how, how it hears you. Things are not always as they seem. I cannot see your brain. And he like taps you on the head with his cane. But you seem to think, nonetheless. In my limited capacity, I suppose. You cannot see the wind and it blows. What do you think will be your fate here? Hmm? What is the end of this story for you? Hmm. I try not to think about the end. The journey is what's important. Uh. Uh. What if that journey includes being vivisected? I would prefer not, obviously, but do you believe that we have fate and we can change that? Gives you a look like you just refer to a concept he doesn't understand, but he doesn't want to seem like he doesn't know what you're talking about and so tries to change the subject. Gotcha. Right, like <laughs> fate, fate is not it's not a, a thing, right to them. And it, so I think he says he says uh, again, there you go, talking like a stranger, <laughs> going to get you in trouble, more trouble than you're already in. What sort of trouble am I in? What offenses have I uh, committed? You exist. <laughs> the worst offense of all. You exist, and you don't belong. You're an oddity. The king has sent word to our master. She's uncovered something from the other side. What do you know about the fool in verse? Anything at all? I know that um, every faction, whether it be um, the Divine Comedy, Blood and Ash, Dragon Knights, they all bow to one of their kind. That's, if I'm mistaken about that, I apologize, but that's what I've gathered so far. Yeah, They are powerful and to be feared and to be listened to and obeyed. That is one way of approaching these things. The Mara are to be survived. The best way that we survive our masters is by doing as they desire. I do not wish to see you taken apart and served to the fool in verse. Not because I care for you, understand, and because it bothers me to see you suffer. I don't know you. I don't care for you at all. But the king is power mad. She thinks you'll make a fine gift to the Mara, and I, well, I prefer things the way they are. Mm. You say you'd rather the king not give me as a gift to the Mara, to the fool of verse. And he's, yeah, he smiles. Mm. And he, uh, he says, you have friends here. Close at hand, in fact. Our agents have seen them coming and going. Mm -hmm. They slipped away at the gate where you could not. And now they are being hunted. For the very same purpose. Our master is obsessed with your home. <clears throat> of finding it, of and he like he takes out a fan, and he like starts fanning himself, and you can see something is something is going on. Like he's and the the page puts a huge hand on his back and kind of like just just like pets him gently. He kind of has the vapors, and he, he adjusts his wig, and he says, mm. "If you care for your friends at all." You're going to listen to me and not that little bitch. Mm. I want you to escape. 
take your friends and flee back to whatever hole you crawled out of. Keeps the balance here at home. And you get to save your mm. friends. You see my predicament, though. My predicament, especially now, is if I say, well, yes, I would love to escape, but I would love to meet up with my friends, and then the king finds out because you're lying to me. It's a trick to see if where my loyalties lay, and I will be punished, and severely at that, I'd imagine. So, I can't rightly agree or disagree with you because I don't know who's mm, what master you're serving at this time right now. He shrugs. He, uh, he says uh, all I've given you is options. Mm. And he reaches into his sleeve and he pulls out uh, a key. It's like a little iron key. It's got a faint green kind of G, like shine to it. And he holds it out. And he says, and Options give us choice. And choice is the only power there is. You take it. I, I, I look at it for a minute. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I pick it up with my trunk mm -hmm. and I, I guess I, cause I'm wearing a, I'm just wearing a loincloth, aren't I? Yeah. Like, yeah, basically like a, do, like do, a sumo I have belt. To, do, I, <laughs> do I have the prison wall at this shit? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, I think I, in this scene, I think in this scene, it can just go away. Like you can just be like, right, I now sure, have sure, it sure, in sure, my, sure. you know? Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I figured, um, I, 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 before I put it away, I'll, I'll ask him <clears throat> a couple of things come to mind. One, what is this a key to? And two, there are quite a few eyes in here. Can they be trusted to be silent? Yeah, and he, he looks around. Uh, and as if noticing them for the first time, you see all of the like, oh, and you've just, you've just betrayed these people deeply. So they got, they got through this whole conversation without the queen, uh, and the page noticing that the servants were even here. Like it was as if they didn't exist at all. And you're like, but what about all these people? And then they stop and they look, both of them look around like, oh, oh yeah. And they uh -oh. look at you like. You've just, you've just, what have you done? No. And, uh, and so, um, the, the queen smiles, uh, and he says, Oh, I don't think we have to worry about them. And the page kind of like moves forward slightly and they, they all like flinch in, in fear. Mm. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't say. I don't say a thing. I let yeah. him do whatever. I'm. I'm honestly. I. I don't. I don't fucking know these people from Adam. Sure, they bathed me and shit. But like, yeah. I mean, they no, could be fucking murderers and terrible people. They could be terrible people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh. Yeah. So I think uh, the the queen says, um. You're, you're at a crossroads. On the one hand, you can listen to me. Use the key I gave you and escape. It's for a set of manacles you're being fitted for. There's going to be a show. The king wants to parade you around in the playhouse a bit before the fool arrives to take you apart. Find an opportunity. Escape. Or, if you prefer, continue to be our guest here in the comedy. The fool will arrive. He'll find your friends. And then all three of you will die over and over again. Mm. But that's your choice to make. I see. Mm. Doesn't seem like much of a choice. Unless 
well, unless uh, everything you've said is a lie or whatever, but I don't know if there's anybody in this particular court that I can trust fully. So I guess I won't focus on the destination, but the journey. <clears throat> Before, uh, if it, it, I was speaking um, <clears throat> with the with the king, and she offered me um, a boon, but before it was before I opened my mouth and ruined it. We are so often our own you. worst enemies. Please, I had a very special um, jug. Not much to look at, but it has a sentimental value. And he's he's Does nodding. He's, uh, yeah, he's nodding, uh, and and he says, uh, "Yes, yes, your magical jug it seems to ooze garbage. Quite disgusting. Hmm. You want it back? Yes, if if that's uh, and he, able to happen. He looks he looks back at the page and he says, "Oh, I don't know if he's going to want to part with it." And the page opens his enormous cartoonish mouth and says, No, take jug. Mine. And he like slams mm. his fists on the floor. Not like really aggressive, but just to punctuate like, mm, Mine. Mm, right. Um, do I see it on him or is it in him? I, no, I think I think I think now that you now that you like look and and I would have mentioned it before, but it's funnier to have it show up now. It's okay. hanging from the back of his weird like uh, leather underpants. It's just like like tied onto it and just hanging uh, near near his hip. Mm. Um, I uh, I look at I look at the the page and then I look back at the uh, the queen and I ask him, mm, is there? Any way that you could convince the page? Maybe a trade or I mean, something? Uh, the queen says, why would I do that for you? He's mm -hmm. very dangerous. Well, may not look like it, but uh, my, uh, my escape from this place is, is in fact, Doing you a favor. That seems only right for a deal to be struck, and you do me one. It's so arrogant. I love it. That, like, thanks for helping me, but I'm actually helping you when you're helping me, so you got to give me more stuff. <laughs> All right, roll, uh, roll a persuade check. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Uh, persuasion. There we go. Oh, Whoa! crit in him! <laughs> oh, there you go. So I, 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 yeah, the queen, the queen, uh, looks at you and purses his wrinkled lips. And he says, uh, yeah, I think it's a game recognized game kind of a situation. Yeah. Like, he's like, yeah. yeah, he's like, from, for a creature with next to nothing, relying on the help of strangers with their own agendas, you're quite bold arrogant too i like that i'll have a conversation with the page we'll discuss it i'll see what i can do to get it out of his hands into yours one thing at a time get yourself out of here first and then i'll have it brought to you and then we have and a deal to that like the page can overhear this, and to that the page like like grumbles and um uh and and yawns, opening his his enormous mouth. And when he does, uh, you can see inside the the page's mouth because his head is like you know it's pretty big. Inside his mouth, there is an entire human face at the back of his throat instead of uh where like the tonsils and the uvula would be. There's just a little human <laughs> face with like. Tiny little beady eyes and its own little mouth God. and nose and little little ears and it, he yawns like Aah! and you see his little face inside and the face is just staring at you like Ugh! and then his mouth closes again uh, and um, the queen says mm, 
time to take this one to bed. Come along. And like hugs on the, the chain and they, they turn to leave. I, I yeah, I go back to, to my spot in the room wherever that was and Okay. Take the key and like kind of I bet I could find like like a like a, a fold in my ear that I can like put it in. You can like very, that. very easily hide it in your mouth too. Like it's pretty small. That you is, just okay. it you three. Oh, You're an elephant. Okay. You got big cool. old teeth. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So you go back to you back to being uh, tended to. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, while all of this is happening, uh, Berg and Ramus, you are uh, you're in the uh, in the Divine Comedy. You're in the Playhouse, right? Uh, what uh, what are the two of you doing there, uh, Ramus? You know that uh, Yota is somewhere nearby, but you haven't. You haven't seen him, um, I, and you used one of those coins you got to pay your way in here, and you can drink and hang out. But at at the yeah. end of last episode, um, we were just noticing that the crowd uh, was a little weird, and that's where we like cliffhanger. Yes, yeah, that's right. So like, that's right. So the they're all kind of like on edge and strange. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I would like like to look at them closely and see what's going on if I can like <coughs> they're, yeah like observe the room a little more closer okay um you can make an insight check so we'll see nice, nice. so we see all this through through Ramus's eyes so to you Ramus this seems like i don't know how how much like there must be some cultures in the in the court of swords that have like an end of the world thing built into their religion or their practices, right? There have to be like apocalypse cults. I feel like that's just like a mm-hmm. given for any culture with linear time that there's an end of it. Um, so I don't know how you ever interacted with them. Maybe you were part of a Church of the Sun mission to like convert some weird primordial. Uh, end of the world cultists or something. Um, but your interaction with that religion or that, that kind of attitude reminds you of, of this. These two things have that same frantic kind of burning the candle at both ends because the candle will eventually destroy, be destroyed kind of, uh, kind of vibe. Um, these people are acting like they are running out of time uh, and that they're okay with it. They're trying to enjoy the the last moments. There's no there's no sadness to it. It is a a revel uh, at the end of uh, at the end of time. Closing time approaches for something for these guys. Um, and that's the that's the impression. Uh, yeah, they're they're acting like something extremely bad is on its way, um, but they're trying real hard to ignore it or to to revel their way through. Uh, if you have questions too uh, about things you might you might notice or whatever. Um. It, it are there like does this place have like guards or something or like is it mostly just people partying with no one supervising or is it there was there was a bouncer uh and there are people serving like drinks you see people walking around uh holding drink trays and and serving food um but uh the the place itself doesn't seem to have anybody like armed trying to keep order in fact, it's that seems uh, counter to the point. Like, if a fight broke out here, people would probably be excited rather than like worried or like need someone to, to keep it. order. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Uh, Berg. These people look like it's the last party of their life. They're ravenous almost with joy and pleasure. A little weird. Fucked up, no. I said I, weird. That means similar. I told <laughs> you something is off. Yeah, these these people are remind me of these weird, weird people we saw deep, deep in the woods. This weird cult that. Thought like the apocalypse was coming. They were ravenous and but weird and spewing and weird st- chants at me and stuff. 
we try to let them see reason that the world's never going to end. But yeah, it wouldn't. It, it have can't. It. It, it can't possibly. Like that's just not how like the physics of the universe work. Like these people would be especially unusual uh, in uh, in your experience for both of you. Mm. <sighs> Weird. Hmm. Well, perhaps we should keep a low profile here. Maybe wait for this show to start, whatever that guy mentioned last time. I think about some presentation soon. Either that or try to blend in. Look like we're drinking and maybe drunk and lost trying to find Yota. Well, we don't know who we can trust here, so try to keep it. Try not to mention specifics. We can't trust anyone. You can't even trust me, Berg. Trust that is no also one. also true sometimes. Ah, well. I guess let's try to grab a seat and get a drink. Wonder what they serve here. <laughs> yep. Cut to yep. a picture of Berg with a hammer behind <laughs> Berg. <laughs> <laughs> like, can't trust you, huh? Bonk. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So you want to you want to try to you want to try to blend in and yeah uh, and uh, yeah and, and like get a drink and yeah try to find a table or a booth somewhere like in the side and just order a drink. I wave yeah. the waitress over. And so we paid for it. You did, yeah. You can, and they want you to get drunk, right? That's they want reveling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you are you are brought, um, whatever. Like they brought a, a beverage if you want, but yeah, if you if you find there are booths, um, there's a a big open area kind of in the in the center that surrounds the stage. Uh, and at this point, I think that they've pulled curtains around the stage to prepare something behind. And so some people have started to sit down in the, in the seats. Uh, and then there's an empty area where you can kind of stand. And then up above, there's a mezzanine uh, where you can look down into the area. And then there's a ring around the whole outside of the other thing where there are tables and booths and places to sit. So if the two of you want, you can, you can find a, a table to sit at. Uh, and yeah. yeah, Berg, you wanted to call uh, someone over? Mm, I just or for drinks and food just to okay. keep up appearances. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, they're going to bring you weird void food, so it's going to taste strange, but you're entitled to it as having paid. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, you're, you're brought some kind of like strange, like fungus based dish that they then light on it's fire. Like Klingon food. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just very strange Klingon food. Uh, and then uh, some some beverages, some kind of greenish wine uh, in a carafe, uh, and then some iron like goblets, and uh, yeah. And so you, you want to, Ramus? You were saying you just want to sit until something happens on stage. Yeah, we want to see what the show was, and then maybe while the show is yeah. going on, use that as a distraction and go some other places. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So while you're while you're waiting. Uh, kind of out of out of nowhere, like someone splits off from the crowd. Uh, you don't get to see them until they, they sit down at the table with you. So this person just sits down uh, at one of the empty tables uh, or one of the empty seats at your table. And uh, it only takes a moment before you realize uh, who it is. Uh, it is a uh, little action. Uh, and he looks concerned. <laughs> he, has, uh, he has a cloak on, like he looks like he's just come in. And he, uh, he looks up at you, the two of you. The hell are you two doing? Grabbing a drink and waiting for the show. You're here. You're here illegally. You, you can't just be walking around in public. We've been looking for you. Oh, I. Someone's going to see you. I, I thought it was just. To get in, I didn't realize they checked ID inside. It's it's not that. It's if they find you and you don't have papers, then you're going to need to get processed. And if they process you, they're going to figure out where you're from. 
And if they figure that out, it's not going to go well for either of you. I, the business and I have been searching, and this is not a safe place for you right now. We can help. You, you should just, you should come with me. What? Well, we, we found someone that can get us papers. Name's Aorta. We have to do a job for him. Oh, no, 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 you, you don't, you don't want to do that. I, we already swore we have to. Oh. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, well, um. Also, Aorta, do not make me look different. You haven't let Aorta examine you yet, have you? No, not yet. You should very definitely not do that. And now I know, I know that he, he, <laughs> that he's, he's playing nice and trying to seem like he's your friend, but <laughs> Aorta is a very, very dangerous flesh crafter. There is, there is no one in opportunity that has as much power and, <sighs> And not shy of the Mara. He's not your friend, is all I'm saying. You, you I can't... wanted to try to get wings. <laughs> he looks he looks at Ramus like Re really? Like this, this is I, Berg like, feels like a dead end to me. <laughs> I'm I'm shrugging like Yeah, I, I don't know. I know I'm for Centaur, but he wanted wings. It's we're, we're talking about it. Maybe we... Like, keeps looking around like all paranoid. Maybe I didn't make this clear enough to you when we were coming back from the vein. You need people who know who you are and are not trying to exploit you. We can hide you until we can find a way to send you home. If you just walk around talking to people, someone is going to notice that you're... You're not from here. If you keep fidgeting around like that, they definitely will know they're not from around here. Calm yourself. Yeah, yes, uh, of course, you're right. I, I just, he looks at Ramus again. I'm just I'm concerned about you. I, I I, I appreciate that. I see you're nervous. You're separated from your friends. You're worried about us. Where should we hide? I, we'll take your advice. We just need our friend Yota, who is in this building. We will go to your hiding place. We lost Maharib. I don't know where he is. Oh. This is altogether too complicated. I, I, we need to talk to the business. We, we should get out. We should get out of here. Uh, I'll, I'll take you to her now. And, um, and he stands up, uh, and he turns around and he bumps directly into this old man on, on these like stilt, these wooden stilt sandals. And he spills the old man's drink all over the front of his like silk jacket. And he looks up at the old man and then follows the, the silver chain over the old man's shoulders. This enormous, mostly naked, thumb headed creature. And you just see a look of. You watch. Little Action's brain make the flight or fight like a decision. Uh, and he, he, he just falls to his knees and like just like begins like apologizing to this, this old man who's just glowering down at him. Do either of you say anything? Y yes. I, I take my drink, walk over to the business and kick him as hard as I can. I'm like, how oh, to, to dare little action? You? Yeah, okay. Yeah, little action. How <laughs> All right. dare you? 
You spilt this man's drink here, sir. You can have mine. What is wrong with you? And I keep kicking him on the ground. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Make a dece- Make a deception check. Do do it with advantage. Fight, flight, or grovel. Oh, you needed that advantage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. Advantage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the the old man takes he takes the drink and he he looks at you, Ramus. The two of you look at each other and he he says, oh, good help is so hard to find. Our underlings are always embarrassing us. I've gotten wine all over my best cravat and just before the show. This must be very embarrassing for you, sir. I know. I'm. I'm so sorry. It, it, it's probably the lack of order in this place. The guard keeps changing. Underlings keep m- acting up. Yeah. I apologize, sir. Can I yeah. pay that for that for you? I would like to give he, you a coin. He 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 puts his he puts his hand up and he he kind of scowls a little and he he says and he looks over at Berg and he looks at you and he he says that that most nerve making of phrases. You're not from here, are you? Haven't been in town long? Just arrived recently. Traveled very far. It's, Hmm. I heard this, we heard that this is the place for opportunity. Yes, a bit on the nose, if you ask me. Which of our great Dark masters, do you serve, friend? Well, currently we're in the employ of Aorta, doing a job. Huh, that flesh-crafting upstart. Interesting. So the two of you are vein hunters, then? Yes. Doing what we can. What is your name, vein hunter? I am Burnt Face. This is Bert the Dumb. <laughs> and oh, so blooded. this whole time, the enormous brute behind this, this man has, has said <laughs> nothing, except he looks over at Berg, like, looks over, he turns his body, body language towards Berg, and he, he puts up an enormous hand and waves his little fingers and grumbles. Hello, Bert. Berg looks at Ramus and looks back at the the brute and is like, "Hello." The old man. The old man smiles at you, Ramus, and he he says, uh, "We seem to have a thing or two in common. You really shouldn't let yours just run around like that." And he like tugs on the leash a little bit. I know. I- I've been letting him go free. Just he's been well behaved, unlike this one. And I kick him again on the ground. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he, yeah, and yeah, down on the ground, uh, uh, little action is being <laughs> kicked pretty severely. Uh, and he uh, he whimpers. Uh, he's playing along. And he uh, uh, the the old man says, um, "I'll forgive you for not recognizing us. I am the queen." This is my dear friend, the page. We serve the fool in verse. Welcome to our home, burnt faith. I didn't know I was in the company of such, of someone of uh, such importance. I deeply apologize for the help. No. <laughs> let's, not, let's, let's not dwell on unpleasantness. Besides, I'm I mean, to quite enjoy the stain. I think it makes me look a little rugged. Would you and your friends like to join us for the show? I have a private box. And he gestures with his fist-shaped cane. And you can see up above the stage, there's a, like a wooden, like a VIP box, basically with a window in the front. Looks right down on the stage. I think tonight's show is going to be very interesting. Yeah, I heard rumor of there some sort of reveal. Should be entertaining. Yes. The, qu- 
queen, uh, the king has something to show us. I won't spoil the fun. Come. Well, I can't resist the request of someone of such importance. Little Action looks up at you like, oh god, please don't do this. Oh my god, no, what are you doing? This is the the opposite of what you should do. He looks up at you, and he, like, he co- he's like coughing blood, like black blood into his hands, and he's got like a big bruise on his face from when you kicked him. But Then I look down at the business, and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. When do we have to meet Aorta? I ask the business. Uh, a little action? Yeah, a little, a little he, uh, yeah, he's like, sorry, little action. Uh, yeah, it's okay. They have complicated, stupid yeah. names. Um, <laughs> he, uh, so you want, you want him to play along and get you out of here, right? That's, that's yeah, what like you're trying to imply. Like, okay. Well, we gotta go, you know? Oh, you know, boy. Okay. Um, ah, oh, this is not his strong suit. Let me, let me roll. Uh, you can hear, how about you, how about you roll, roll first, um, roll deception, give me a deception roll, and that'll help me get an idea of how well, uh, or what the difficulty for this will be, 12. Okay. okay. I would like to use my lucky dice to roll one more time, <laughs> then I can use okay. either dice. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sounds good. 14. Okay, 14. <laughs> All right. 14, six, uh. Oh, you're lucky. All right. <laughs> so there's a moment. They're like, ah, uh, and then he, he, he nods and, and through the blood in his mouth, he's like, you see him swallow a bunch of blood. He's like, ah, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, soon. And then now, in fact, that, that's why I came to retrieve you. You, you see from outside, uh, we're, we're late already, sir. I know you're in a hurry, but you gotta be a little more careful. <sighs> and the, uh, the, the queen, uh, yeah, kind of rolls his eyes conspiratorially, like with you, like, fucking idiots, like, tell me about it. And, uh, and he says, another time then, perhaps. Tell me, where are you um, staying? I should like to call upon you. I give them the name of the inn we were at. Mm, Miss Tippets? Yeah, okay. Miss Tippets, yeah. He smiles and he says, very good. I'll send a messenger. We'll have E. Now, if you'll excuse me, I don't want to miss the curtain. And uh, he, he moves past you. And the, the big guy has to kind of turn sideways to, to get past you. And uh, the page looks at Berg as he goes, and he waves. He's like, "Bye, Bert." <laughs> and uh, and as you turn, Berg, you turn to look. You see hanging from the belt <clears throat> of this <throat> of this this creature a familiar jug dangling from his waist. And the two of them, <laughs> the two of them, pass to the stairs and and continue uh, out of the crowd. Um, Remus, do you help? Do you help little action up off the floor? Yeah, I, I'm like, sorry about that. Uh, I had to do yeah, any desperate things so many times. Yeah, he's holding I his had, ribs. I had to make it convincing. Yes, it was very. Ah, thank you. That was I'm close. convinced. Yeah, right. Exactly. He's certainly convinced. And he he uh he says, um, well, we're more than a little lucky, and we should make good and get out of here. Well, I feel like we should at least see the beginning of the show while we're here. It's only a few minutes away, and then we'll leave. Yeah. I promise. Yeah, I was gonna say this is that's one of those moments where your escape, like he wants to go and you want to stay. And when you're like, okay, we we give us just like a minute. I just want to see what this is. He turns as they are like shutting the doors, right? As the like, all right, if you're in, you're in. If you're out, you're out. It's time. And so we see the doors like swing shut, and uh, we see one of them like shove a uh, an eye, one of the workers like shove a, a bar through the door so no one can get in, uh, and. You hear uh, music begin to begin to play, 
uh, there are uh, there are drums and some kind of string instrument that starts to play to kind of signal to everyone like something is happening. And so people up in the mezzanine temporarily abate their fornicating. People down below take seats and the crowd begins to gather around the stage. Uh, and as they do, uh, we, we crossfade to the outskirts uh, of town. So outside of Opportunity, out in the swamp, uh, we find a series of uh, of tents, of hide tents, gray hide tents, uh, around a a field of muck in all directions. Uh, and as we get closer, we we fade again to the interior of one of these tents. And on the uh, on the the table within the within the tent, we see a table, and on it we see a heart. And the heart seems to be growing like roots, we see a network of blue and red, like dull blue and red uh, veins stretch out from the heart and they lay on the table, uh, slowly kind of throbbing. Uh, and we, we see this kind of thing laying on the table. And we, uh, we pan across the room to, uh, to Maharib. What are, you, what are you doing, Maharib, when you were here in the, in the company of uh, obstinate bugfucker? How much time has passed since uh, we were last um, with the character? I, think like, I, I was sleeping. Last yeah, time we were like here. you, you've yeah, you've had time to rest. Uh, okay. So you've probably just woken up. Uh, Bugfucker isn't necessarily like around, um, right? Unless you want to be talking to him. Okay. Uh, then I'm. If I'm still within the same tent that I slept in. Um, I think I'm just standing over the the table where this um, heart is starting to create veins and and studying that, I'm trying to understand yeah. what what the fuck's going on. Mm-hmm. Um. Did uh, did the the BF say where he was going? <laughs> <laughs> um. He he just seems to be like doing his normal his normal work. Uh, just kind of like traveling around and uh, you know making things and uh, you know just just maintaining the maintaining the farm. Okay, I think the next time he stops by in the tent, or I see him like cross by uh, the the door leading outside, I'll I'll go and start okay. up a conversation with him. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you hear him. Actually, you hear him outside. He's like you can hear him struggling with something, okay. like grunting and like complaining to himself. Yeah, uh, and you, like, wanna, you wanna go and I open and the, check it out? the tent and walk outside, duck under and walk outside. Yeah. Okay. So you uh, you go outside and uh, yeah, he's he's pulling a wagon and the wagon seems to be stuck in the mud. Uh, and on top of this wagon, uh, there are a bunch of kind of lumpy, slowly like pulsing um, shapes, some kind of like mass of flesh of some kind but it's yeah it's a he's pulling on it and it seems to be stuck in the uh stuck in the mud okay um yeah i'll just walk over to it and and lift up the is it like a cart with two wheels on the back and he's pulling yeah. one in yeah i'll just go and lift over yeah. or lift up whatever uh wheel is stuck in the mud so you, you start walking over and he sees you and he, he's like get away from me i don't need help oh. i don't care if you need help or not i'm still going to lift that out of the mud no i i've got it don't touch it he clearly does not got it yeah i ignore him and walk over to the wheel <laughs> and i just start to pick yeah so it up he's just and, and look yeah he's like no what are you, why are you, are you so doing? resistant Stop it. to help Stop. He just lift it up and thunk, <laughs> yeah, put, it down. it up, put it down i didn't need your help i've been fine without you around for plenty of time getting in my way you're just going to slow me down and he just starts like like pulls the wagon and and grunts to get it going again and starts dragging it over to somewhere he's headed someplace yeah i walk and stride alongside just, him yep just kind of ignoring mm -hmm. his unpleasant mood as it were mm -hmm. uh and I, I what is it that you're doing working Right. What does this work consist of? Mm, I have 
too many things to do, and it's far too complicated to explain to a dunderhead like you. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> I fucking love dunderhead. Okay. Uh, could always try. I won't ask questions if I don't, but right now I'm just waiting, and I'm bored. So, suppose I could help. I won't charge you for uh, it. You still owe me, however. He stops. I don't understand. You, you want to help me, but you don't want me to forget that I still owe you. I, you're very confusing. Hmm. You need help? I want to help. Doesn't... I don't, like... I don't need help. Not from you or anyone. Fair enough. You don't need help. However, I could expedite the process. Whatever it is you're doing, you just got stuck back there. I saved you I, moments. I wasn't stuck. I was just adjusting the weight of my you wagon. You weren't stuck. And I start to like pull the wagon back to where it was stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can just lean on it and he won't be able to pull it, right? Like, you're pretty strong. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to make a point of it and just like start yeah, to drag I mean, it back he, to where it was. And he's like, no, what? Now you're just making it worse. I am. And he's like, pull, he pull, like pulls on the wagon. Um, how hard do you want to pull on it? Because he he's trying to like pull back, but uh, enough to prove a point. So however long that means that he can't pull back and it gets stuck in the original position. Okay. Yeah, let's. I mean, let's roll. Make an athletics check. All right. You only got a three, so. Fifteen. Okay, no problem. Still you have total control okay, Jesus. Uh, of his of his wagon. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and he, he's like, what? he lets go. Like, he it's, like, pulls out of his grip, and he says, what are you doing? Don't, don't do that. I thought you weren't That's stuck. Okay. I wasn't, but now I'm going that way, and you're trying to drag my wagon backwards. Uh, I keep going until it's back in the original position, and then I, like... You just drop it back I in the I drop it back in the original position, and then, like, push down on the top so it's even more seated in the mm -hmm. ground. yeah. I'm going back inside. Clearly, you don't need my help. Good. I hope you do. Leave me alone. Mm. I just like walk inside the tent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you, you walk back in, and you just hear him. Like He walks over, and he's just like, fucking that ogre, that ridiculous brute. How dare he? How dare he come out here to my farm? And he's like trying to pull the thing. And he just he's like struggling so hard to get it out of the way, out of the, the mud, especially now. Yeah. Um and uh yeah, and you you go back uh you go back inside and um yeah, and it's 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 a pretty like simple, uh pretty simple space. Mm -hmm. Uh it looks like a, a workshop. Um, Are there any like and, books uh, lying around or any anything to like read? That's created mm. from within this world. Yeah, probably. Yeah, um, there are. Uh, there's a, a shelf of uh, of books next to one of the tables, and they're all kind of jammed in there. Some of them are sideways and piled up, and others are jammed in. Some of them are backwards. Okay, uh, it's clear that there's no there's no good, like a good library system. On the spines, do they have any sense of what's inside of them, like names or markings or anything like that? No, they're all they're all like a blank. Um, blank spines. Okay. Yeah, I just pull out one of the books and open it up to a random page to see if it's like a story, if I can even read it to begin with, if it's an accounting book mm. or what it is. Okay. Um, no, I think I think that make a make an intelligence save. I want to know if this is just you don't know or you don't know why you don't know. Okay, so you got ten. a 10. All right. So that's enough to know. It's not it's not written in a foreign language. Um, it's written in a weird shorthand. It seems that, that these are bug fuckers like journals or notes. Mm. And uh, he has some kind of like shorthand for things. Though you do see a bunch of like biological diagrams. Uh, and he's actually like quite a technically proficient uh, artist. His diagrams, despite being like science diagrams, are quite beautiful. There's like cross sections of animals. Uh, he mostly like he draws anatomy. Uh, you see several plants, um, and in the older, like as you, you have hours to like go through his books. He's while well, he just yeah. try to get the fucking thing out of the mud, yeah. uh, and he's avoiding you, so it's easy. Um, 
the ones that are older, which is to say like they're more worn, um, the covers are more tattered, that kind of thing. Um, they are better, uh, better kept. The, the lines are straighter in the text, though they're still, they still use a shorthand. The individual characters are much, much better drawn. And the diagrams are like almost like Darwin-esque. Like they look like these, these just like beautiful detailed scientific diagrams, uh, mostly of bone structure, of um, like organs. Um, it looks like he, uh, he studied like insects. Uh, and so there's all these cross sections of, of like bugs that he had discovered and uh, made notes about. Hmm. Um, is there but, any, but as time, as time goes on, as you get closer and closer to the sort of like more recent books, um, it, they get weirder and weirder and more and more like conspiracy theory nut job with like strange notes in the margins. And like, yeah, like it seems like something has changed since the, the oldest book and the most current book. Okay. Seen. Is there any sense, and can I make any sense of the dating of these older books, or is are they just old? Is there any? Um, like, I think they're just old. Like you, you recognize objects, and you can see what an object looks like as it ages, right? You have a, right. a very tactile kind of approach to the world, but also it's hard to say because um, even if there was an indicator of time, like they don't measure time the same way that that you do. So okay. Um. Yeah, if I if there's not much to learn from there, only the sense of what you just described, I would kind yeah. of start to explore any more or start to explore more of it. Is there? Uh, does he have like a bedroom? Uh, he sleeps in another tent. You've been put in here. This is like the guest tent, and it's oh, you. God. And it, like all of this stuff is his, but this was just a place where he was like, you can lay on that table if you want to sleep, and that's where I'm gonna put. Like, keep an eye on her while she recomposes. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think when you're looking around, like where what's going on, like looking for something to, to entertain yourself, um, you can't see it. But we cut to outside, and uh, we see uh, a bug fucker has stopped dragging this cart, uh, and is looking up at the sun. And we see him bring his hands together and close his eyes, touch his hands to his forehead, and like mutter something. And we watch the dark spot past its apogee past the the midpoint uh there is a a, a, a flash uh mm -hmm. inside a flash of light of greenish light um there is a wet like gurgling kind of sound and when you look um you see in fast motion uh you see the the veins grow around them flesh uh bones form uh and then you see asleep or unconscious or something uh, and completely naked, blue skin just for display for anyone to see. Uh, you, you watch as a uh, gun princess reforms uh, on the table. Is there a um, like sheet or anything that? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. You can like throw a sheet over. Her. Yeah. Yeah. I immediately yeah. throw a sheet over. Her. Okay. Um, and it starts to dawn on me that like, She's here, but she doesn't have any of her gear. Like it's it's back in the bug farm. It's probably was eaten. Um, <clears throat> she's not conscious, right? No, no, she's unconscious. Okay. Uh, can I see the green light? Like, if I are there windows in this thing? If I look you, out, do I see like green hues? Um, your eyes. So this is this is just like a thing that eyes actually do. Um, right. Your eyes would have adjusted. Like for the first little while when you arrived in this place, everything looked so weird. Green light is completely abnormal, um, but your eyes have adjusted now, so everything seems fine. Like your brain's filtering the green. Um, but that that brief flash, uh, yeah, you saw it, but it, it it comes and goes, right? It's just for a moment. Okay. Um, yeah, then I'll, I'll walk outside to see if I can find Mr. Bug. Okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, as you as you go to open, you're actually walking towards the the, the flap, to the tent. Um, he opens it from the other side. You can see him; he's covered in mud. He's got it on his face, all down the front of him, um, and he looks like he's slipped and fallen in the mud several times. Uh, okay. And he he opens the tent and he looks at you like, "I hate you! I hate you so much! Get out of my way!" Um, and he comes in, 
And uh, and he, he looks over at uh, Gun Princess, and he uh, he sees the, the the blanket or whatever cover the sheet covering her, and he looks at you, and he he's like, "Did she wake up?" Not yet. It was only moments ago that whatever you call this occurred. He shakes his shakes his head. You you sound like a fool. You know that most basic things it's it's like your head is an empty coconut sure <sighs> sun's eye open the moment passed and i came in here to check on her but she's still unconscious she has not spoken or anything no but it's been moments is this not normal you didn't disturb her at all, prodding or shaking. She's very fragile still. No, absolutely not. <sighs> Make an insight check. Uh, these usually go well. Eight. Okay. He has an emotion you cannot recognize. Something happened. <laughs> okay. You see him have a feeling. Uh, and he uh, he says, um, well, I'd hoped she would be awake by now. It's been a full cycle. Hmm. Nah, well, we'll just have to keep waiting. She might be dead. I mean, for real dead. Gone. Broken. It happens. Sometimes trauma that bad. Sometimes the mind doesn't want to come back. The will is gone. Flesh remains. It'll keep coming if it's destroyed again, but... I thought she was tougher than that. He, 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 like, looks at you like, are you understanding any of this? You fucking dumbass. Uh, I'm like, you see me, like, glancing back and forth between, like, the body, as it were, on, on the table and him, and, like, a concerned look comes over my face... I thought people could not die here. What What do you mean? Not coming back. <sighs> it's a punishment for weakness. At least that's what some of the Mara say. We, we die. The darkness takes us over and over and we come back. We come back because we want to. Because who doesn't want to continue existing, even if they spend their whole lives in waist deep in muck, bug shit? <sighs> but sometimes, if someone is weak minded or can fall into a state, become imprisoned, he gestures as if for him it's a foregone conclusion. The falling within. And there's... It's like sleeping, but it lasts forever. There's no coming back from this? Tomorrow have their ways. Wake you up. I don't see any of them around. Hmm. Well, this complicates things. We How don't long... know if she's gone. We don't know if she's gone for sure. Just we'll give her a few more cycles. And after that, she's slug food. Hmm. I don't have much time. I need to get inside the necropolis. Why? There's nothing useful in there. Nothing good. I have people expecting me inside. Oh, I see. So what's holding you back? Go on. Uh, I kind of hesitate to tell him. I stare back at the body and look back. She was going to give me papers. Is that all you need? That and I would like to speak with her again, yes. 
Well, I can help you with half of those things. Hmm. She might be lost to the void, but if you need papers... <laughs> and he, he walks over to one of the shelves. He's like digging through them, just chucking books on the floor. And he, he looks at you. Like he's digging through them. Like he's looking for something. He looks at you and he's like, you touched my books. What else was I supposed to do? Drugs. I don't care. That's why they're in code. Hmm. And uh, yeah, and he continues d- digging through. And he, he yanks out a, uh, a, a sheaf of paper. Just a bunch of papers all piled together. Uh, and he walks over. And he uh, slams him down on the table. Who do you want to be? And you look down, and, and these look like identification papers, like a bunch of them. Like He's got like a dozen of them. Uh, do they have like photos on them, or is it only text? No, no, it's just text. D- does it matter? Are they going to be able to look at me and tell that that's not me? Maybe in one of the greater necropoli. <laughs> Maybe in the capital. Not out here. Hmm. A little pageant, anyway. Uh, I like thumb through the sheets. How many does he have there? Like twenty, ten, five? Like a like a suspicious amount. Like this like is what he lot. does for money, perhaps. He he did. They they don't. You haven't seen any like printing presses or anything like that around. Some of them have like <laughs> bloods. Some of them have like blood stains on them. Hmm. If I were to take four of these, I would consider us balanced and equal. I hope four. You like- <laughs> four whole identities for what? For the work I did yesterday, saving her. Protecting so the, the work farm. I did yesterday. The work I did yesterday. He's not. He's not buying it. But when you said saving her, he looks over at Gun Princess. Um, <coughs> make a make a persuade check with uh, with advantage. All right, I have a negative two to this. Oh my god, Thanks. eleven. Can eleven? All right. Uh, she's not saved yet, but you did what you could tools you're given and I do want to see you out of here and stop fucking with my stuff Hmm. sick of having you around fine take four take four and leave go to the necropolis Uh, I start to like I grab like four of the pieces of are they paper right just like yeah they're like they're like parchment there's some kind of like thick thick paper yeah I'll grab four that don't have blood on them (laughs) <laughs> sure. That okay. seem uh, in better shape than the others. Um, I grab them, like put them in my pouch. Uh, do you mind if I wait around a day or two to see if she comes to? I won't bother you. I'll stay inside here. I won't even touch your books. On one condition. Long as you're here, you pull the cart. Uh, I like. I think I turn around and you see me like smile, but it's. <laughs> I, I don't want to pull the cart. What do you mean, pull the cart? That's all you're good for, you big ox. Look at you. I can't have you doing calculations, and I certainly can't let you anywhere near the slugs. So, you'll pull the cart. <sighs> Well, I'll pull the cart, but I won't like it. He scowls at you. Good. Get to it, then. Yeah, I full-on smile while I'm walking away from him. Walk to the cart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he, he follows you, right? He's just like, obviously, you can't pull the cart. You won't know where to pull it yourself. So, like, I have to be there to supervise you, you big moron. So he, he follows you outside. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Cool. Okay, great. I think that's that's as good a place as any to, to take a break. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take a break here. I uh, still got two hours left to go here on Court of Swords 109, I think, is this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. Wow. What? <laughs> what are you saying oh, wow yeah. for? Really loudly, Max. 
What? Oh, did it go really loud on that? Yeah. You're just saying 109. Yeah. You're, you're, you're like, loud. You're now. like somehow. Why am I loud now? I didn't change anything. I don't know. I just turned it down. <laughs> I just gave you 30, 30 less maybe, decibels. Maybe your ears. Wow. Uh, supple. And no. not, that's not the wrong thing. Yeah. They're yeah. supple. They're my, supple my ears. ears are always <laughs> supple, Max. I lotion my ears every night. Okay? Just supple little ears. Mm. <laughs> Find out how supple right after this break. Boom. Segway. <laughs> we'll see you later in five minutes. Five minutes from now. Bye. <laughs>